I, I guess woke up and said, boy, it's raining pretty hard out. And, you know, that was pretty early in the morning, seven, eight o'clock in the morning. And never seen it rain for so long. I was considering Sunday to be pretty much a day off because I figured all oh, rain. I've been working, you know, a long time, long hours. That's going to be a day off. Take a lot of naps, read the paper, relax, maybe play a game with kids, whatever. And uh, so at about, um, I went down for a nap at about, I don't know, 11, 11.30, something like that. We were out here taking pictures of everything and, you know, kind of, we weren't that concerned about it. It was probably around noontime and I just started hearing probably the boulders coming down the river and watched the water start to rise. There was really no wind, it was just all water. As the day went on, it got heavier and then we started getting calls that, um, you know, there's some flooding here locally and maybe some up on the mountain. Wake up about an hour and a half later, and at that point I looked out the back window and I saw the water up in my field. So at that point, <laughs> that's when I sort of became aware that this was not a uh, regular event. And we, st we, we started the I went down there with uh, my wife and uh, uh, my daughter, and we were looking around, and it was very curious, and it was very interesting to see the water coming up like that. And um, uh, I, we, we just were sort of fascinated by it running across. And then we started realizing that points that just a couple of minutes ago were uncovered yeah. now had water on them. So I put my finger down on my boot and I counted to 60 and realized it was coming up an inch a minute. That's, that's when I started getting a little more thoughtful about it crap, this is serious. And at that stage, um, we immediately, I immediately got on the tractor and started pulling my equipment out of the field. Uh, anything with a gearbox, anything that, that could be ruined by the, all that silt um, and water coming down the river. Uh, and that's really all I had time to do. I would not have believed that in like an hour or so that it would come up at the rate it did. I was on the phone with my friends to find out what was going on and my power went out. So I had no cell service, no power, no phone, anything. It was some, there was a tree that went down and cut the lines and there was, there was no civilization whatsoever. And I said, well, nothing I can do to wait till tomorrow morning and see what happens. Him running back across the backyard because they saw the water start to spray up out of the sewers. And we, my wife was on the porch by then. We jumped in the other vehicle and left. Someone called on the phone and said, you know, we've heard some of the roads are starting to fall apart. You should think about maybe getting out of there. And, I, you know, I said, yeah, I'll leave. You know, I'll just come up and visit you. And not knowing that the next day I was going to be homeless. A hundred yards from the stream and 20 feet up. The stream is really, they call it a river, but it's truly a stream. I saw the water rising, but didn't think anything about it. When I left and I started to drive down the road, um, I came across a lot of the road that was already falling in, and that's when it really started to hit me that something was going on, but still not until about half an hour after I left when one of my neighbors called me and said, your house just fell into the river and it's gone. It didn't seem like any special rain. It's just a steady rain, but apparently it was a little more than that. So we were supposed to spend the night at a friend's house anyway, just to have a Irene party or whatever and do dinner. So we started packing a bag. That's why we were upstairs to kind of get organized to go over there for the afternoon. And that's when everything ha started happening. And I heard water running. So I went to the bottom, you know, I went to look down the bottom of the steps and um, it, the water was coming in through the front door. So we kind of went into panic mode and ran down the stairs and he grabbed our older dog, Cody. There were people that were moving towards us in the water and as the water was rising, I was carrying the dog. There was no room to slip and fall because I didn't want to lose the dog. I didn't want anything to happen to me. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that Every move I made was the right move because 
If I made the wrong move, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to make another move. The water's coming up and it's hitting you in the legs and there's so much stuff underneath the water. You can't see through it, so you don't know what it is. And it's just peeling at your legs. And it happens so quick. The water was coming up, it was about mid-thigh. On my way out, then I, there was a human chain and they were reaching for me to pull me in. I handed them my dog. <laughs> they were not happy about that because they asked me where I was going and what, do you, what are you doing? And I said, and I said, I'm going back to get my girlfriend. <laughs> People thought that we had so much time that we had, that we should have known, but I don't feel like there was any way to know that that was going to happen. We say to each other all the time that, um, thank God it didn't happen at night, because I don't think we would have been here at, you know, if it happened at night. Our urban search and rescue teams, our, our Swift Water folks, performed 150 res rescues during or immediately following the storm. The pictures, the videos from people who are um, now stranded because the floodwaters have come up, those photos and videos are critical so we can relate what's going on in a computer and this amount of rainfall equals this much flooding. That's um, really, really important to actually know what's happening on the ground. And obviously our green quarters put all our resources in one place and then of course the roads got washed out and made it a little difficult to get everything to where they were going. That, most of the shelters opened, but some of the supplies we couldn't move anywhere. All right, I am stranded on an island of water. That was our driveway. It's a kind of feeling of helplessness, it's like you know the people need this stuff and there's a lot of phone calls coming in from different communities and it's like, okay, we're gonna do our best to get there and you, as being the Red Cross or any first responder, you don't want to say, um, well, it, it's going to take some time to get there. You really want to get it there now. And, and you can't. You try your way. We figure out our maps, try to get them there, and, you know, it takes hours. And we could get to some places, and some places we just had to wait. Yeah, I remember my parents, you know, they just wanted to get here. They wanted to get to us, and it was really hard to explain to them that there was no way to even get to us. Yeah, it was more than we thought it was going to be. And of course, we had our resources all in Rutland, most of them, so we could move them out, and we had to wait to the military for high water vehicles. Because of the major impact on the transportation infrastructure, I'm not I'm not sure that, that maybe help could have gotten there any quicker. It was, it was one of those days you don't go to sleep very comfortably, but, but it was the rest you needed. You know. When we came back the next morning, we discovered the water had been up about two and a half feet inside our first floor. You know, the next morning I woke up, I actually walked down river for a long way. I mean, I didn't sleep much. So I had eaten breakfast and was out of the house, just crack of dawn, and started walking down the river and just surveying what was going on. And the river at that point was almost back within its banks. Power was out, water was down. There was. You know, the, the uh, streets themselves are blocked off. Uh, driveways, cars everywhere. Uh, there was probably three or four cars across the street on the lawn. There were two or three on the road. The next day we woke up and we both had just, you know, cuts and scrapes and bruises. We were able to get down after the first day to get down to the Pittsfield store and kind of see the neighbors and find out what was going on. And, you know, that's when they, everybody started putting things together and you know it's amazing how the town and people who weren't affected just jumped right into what to do.